The body survivability partly depends on the homeostasis mechanism. Through the negative feedback loop, our body can maintain the stability of its internal condition, despite major changes in the environment. But what if instead of counteracting those changes, the body amplifies it? That is how the positive feedback loop works. Change or stimulus detected by the receptors scattered around the human body are processed and sent as signals to order the effectors to amplify the impact of the stimulus. The loop has both beneficial and less beneficial effects on the body. The example of the beneficial effects are nerve signaling, blood clotting, and giving birth. Let's discuss the less beneficial first. Alzheimer's is one of the harshest conditions for the elderly. It decreases their quality of life by inducing loss of memory, impaired thinking, and speech difficulties. In the healthy human brain, the amyloid beta is a protein that has a role related to memory. However, in the brain of a person with Alzheimer's, the blood circulation is damaged, so the amyloid beta molecules are abnormally accumulated. These proteins tangle and fold and gradually build up into plaques. The plaques produce inflammatory molecules that damage the brain and cause other debilitating effects, including the production of more amyloid beta itself. Then, the newly produced molecules contribute to the formation of even more plaques and so on, so the positive feedback loop continues. To break the loop, scientists have been developing drugs that seek to reduce the amyloid beta and its precursors. However, the positive feedback loop also occurs in normal physiological processes. For example, the generation of nerve signals. When the nerve fiber is stimulated, some sodium ions will enter the nerve cells by going through the sodium gate on the nerve cell membrane. Instead of opposing this and stopping the entry of further sodium ions, the nerve cells react by opening more channels so that even more sodium ions can enter the cell. The more sodium ions entering the cell, the more the change in membrane potential, which eventually builds up the required action potential for the nerve to fire and pass the nerve signal. However, unlike in disease conditions, this positive feedback loop will eventually stop as the sodium channel deactivates itself after a certain height of membrane potential is reached. The potassium gates open and move potassium ions out of the nerve cells, so the pile of positive ions inside the cells are reduced. Furthermore, the ATP-powered sodium-potassium pumps start to pump the ions to return the nerve cells into their resting potential. The sodium channels then unblock themselves and ready for the next nerve signal. The next example of beneficial positive feedback loop is during a blood clot. If blood vessels tear open, the body needs to act fast before the blood drains out and suffocates surrounding cells. The injured blood vessels expose substances that will invite platelets to move in. The platelets are activated and bind to each other to cover the open wound, while producing signaling molecules at the same time. The increased number of molecules recruit even more platelets that now produce a vast amount of signaling molecules. The loop continues until the wound is closed and sealed by the fibrin molecules. Watch the more detailed explanation in our sister channel. Later on, some of the signaling molecules also induce the release of molecules that break down the clot, so it doesn't become detrimental to the blood flow. Another important example of positive feedback is its role in the process of childbirth. When a baby is ready to be delivered, there is an increased pressure on the cervix. This pressure signals the brain to release the oxytocin hormone to promote contraction, which leads to more pressure, more hormone release, and more contractions until the baby is delivered safely. If the positive feedback response does not come into action, there will not be enough contraction to push the baby out. When the baby is delivered and no more pressure is detected in the cervix, the positive feedback loop stops. We can see that both negative and positive feedback play very important roles in homeostasis and the survival of humans, as long as they act in balance, as all things should be. Thank you for your continuous support, especially our valued patrons and members who have been encouraging us to keep producing more quality content.